partial derivative of social welfare with respect to theta, keeping the y constant. That's our second term. So what does that term tell us? So this is a term that says whether, you know, if I abstract from UI, whether increasing tightness increases welfare or not. So, you know, this is exactly what we studied when we studied efficient labor market tightness. We said when the labor market tightness is efficient, a change in tightness has no effect on welfare. When tightness is inefficiently low, you know, even more of it, then we know that an increase in tightness increases welfare. When tightness is inefficiently high, so if there's only too much tightness, an increase in welfare decreases, uh, an increase in tightness decreases welfare. So basically, that term here is what we can call an efficiency term. It captures whether the labor market. operates efficiently or not. Okay, uh, efficiently in the sense of what we saw when we studied efficient unemployment and efficient labor market tightness. And um, there are essentially um, three situations here. There are three possible cases. the derivative of social welfare with respect to tightness is zero. What does that mean? Well, that's exactly what we saw. So here it means that your labor market tightness is efficient. You know, your labor market operates efficiently. And in that case, what the key takeaway? Well, if that term is zero, you know, it means that the two terms uh, you know, the two extra terms in the formula are zero, and then in that case it means that, you can see if we go back to our formula, the labor market operates efficiently. Uh, we have a term, the, all the two terms here, they are going to disappear. And so it means that the bailey Chetty formula for public finance will remain valid. So actually, although we are in a more complicated macro model, when the labor market is efficient, uh, in, in that case, what we learn in a micro setup without taking into account microeconomic consideration remains valid, which is quite uh, which is quite an interesting insight. But that's true only when the labor market tightness is efficient, when the labor market when the labor market operates efficiently. The second case, imagine that the derivative of social welfare with respect to tightness is positive. What does that mean? So that means that if you increase tightness, you're able to increase welfare, you're able to get closer to efficiency. So that means that your tightness is inefficiently low. So you want to increase it to get closer to efficiency. Okay, so here we're in a situation where tightness is inefficiently low. In other words, it means that your labor market is inefficiently slack. So here the labor market does not operate efficiently. And here what we learned that in general in that case actually now our Bellicetti formula is not going to be valid. So once you have this inefficiency in the labor market, you can't just, you know, the second term that we've highlighted is going to be non-zero and you can't just use the formula 
from uh, microeconomics from public finance. So here there's a really big difference between what you learn in public finance and what you learn in what we call uh, macro public finance when we take into account the entire economy, the entire market. And what is the last possibility? So the last possibility is that the derivative of social welfare with respect to tightness is negative. So what does that mean? It means here that if you increase tightness, you're going to reduce welfare. Which also means that if you reduce tightness, you're going to increase welfare. Which means that your tightness is actually, you want to reduce it, so your tightness is inefficiently high. So here, your, if you want, your labor market is inefficiently tight. It does not, the labor market does not operate efficiently in that case. And here again, it's through the same, uh, you know, the same reason as, the same conclusion as before, right? Here again, the belly chetty. Um, the formula is not valid anymore. Alright, so we see. So what's interesting is that when we study a policy uh, and take into account microeconomic consideration. Whether your market operates efficiently or not is actually will have an impact on the design of the policy. And that's why all the work we did on um, studying what is the efficient labor market tightness, trying to figure out whether the labor market, you know, whether there's an unemployment gap or not. So whether um, the tightness is at the efficient level or it's too high or too low is going to matter a lot for policy because then if you're not at efficiency, you have to adjust your policy to take that into account. You can't just rely on kind of public finance formulas that omit this, possi this possibility of inefficiency on the labor market.